Welcome to the Linwood Bell Radio Podcast, where we explore topics in literacy and learning. I'm Dave Hungerford for Lindemood Bell, and here's a question we sometimes get. Is Lindemood Bell just for students with learning disabilities? While our approach has proven effective for students with dyslexia and other diagnoses, many of our students just need reading to be easier, like a fourth grader who's reading at a third grade level. We can identify why reading is hard for that student, and our individualized sensory cognitive instruction can turn what was a weakness into a strength. If your student's having difficulty in reading, reach out to your local learning center for information. You can call us at 800-233-1819. Today's episode comes from a trip I took to Sydney, Australia a while back, and I had the opportunity at our learning center to meet Ray Waterhouse, who was a rancher in Sydney and had gone through law school. Here's our conversation. My name's Ray, or Ray Waterhouse. Um, We are in Sydney, Australia. Um, I am an ex-student of Linda Mood Bell. I went and studied with Linda Mood when I was, I shouldn't say my age, I'll start again. Uh, No, no, um, four years ago, I decided to undertake a law degree. Um, I am dyslexic and I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was 18. So I never read a book um, while I was at school and never really sort of read after school so as I'm a rancher and it's I want to start using my brain so I knew I had an issue with reading so I came and sat and did the Linda Mood course intensively for about two months and start at the beginning and worked my way through and did that for two weeks before I started a law degree. I have to ask you a question. How did you get through school without being able to read a book? Struggled, struggled. I was in, in Australia, we have, um, year, when you're 16, it's year 10, you can go and do an apprenticeship or leave school. I was told, you will never go to university, go leave school now, go do a trade. Um, I'm a little bit stubborn, and this was at one of the very expensive boys' schools in, in, in Australia. I stayed to year 12, didn't really get a good mark, but got through year 12 and then sort of got out into the workforce. Um, I did go to university and I did a Bachelor of Commerce degree, but that took a lot longer. I had to drop the workload. So rather than doing the recommended subjects, I sort of did half the load and sort of took twice as long to get through. What was it like when they gave you the diagnosis of dyslexia? They didn't really understand dyslexia back then. They didn't know this, it was 1989. So dyslexia hadn't really sort of come to a forefront. Psychologists were talking about learning difficulties, learning um, pathways, and sort of talking about this disconnect between the eye and the brain and cognitive functions. But it was really early stages back then. In Australia, we didn't have these skill sets or these, you know, the, the, the teachers didn't, schools didn't talk. You were a round hole fitted with a round peg. If you were, you know, with a square peg, they just bashed that into your round hole until it sort of fit. Um, so there wasn't global. So in year 12, because I was struggling so much, we went and saw a psychologist and this lady sort of said, I read a paper on dyslexia and I think it could be dyslexia, but they didn't really know. So, so it wasn't like they had a solid test. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. And I don't think it was, I can't remember it was actually a test. It was more just um, a feeling. Yes. I'd like to hope we've progressed since then, but sometimes I'm not sure. Well, I, I, I say um, it has come a long way especially in the original testing that they go through and look at your cognitive and, you know, and really break you down has gone a long way to, I found, point out my strengths and also point out the weaknesses. And the weaknesses aren't weaknesses, they're areas just to build on and to develop and go further. So, and that was the beautiful thing about sitting down and doing the course. And I was sitting with eight year olds, nine, 10 year olds. And it was funny at the end of the day, you'd be standing there and the parents would say, oh, where's your child? Oh no, I'm the child sitting doing the course. So it was a lot of fun, but I really got a lot from it. And to the point that in my law degree, I missed out on doing honors by 2%. 
So I, I sat on a 68% average, which was 70 is a distinction. But rather than do four subjects in a semester, I ended up doing seven because I wanted to take the five years and do it in three and a half. So I still worked full time and I got a 68% average in the course. Yes, a lot of part of it was to do with being older. You could think your way through the problems and the scenario, but a lot of it was due to Linda Mood and helping me to understand how to break down English, how to break down the words, because law isn't just a three syllable word. There are they're, they're large, complex words. And in Australia, I was very lucky that the law, and I think in America as well, they're going from using the Latin words to what they call plain English law. So they really want you to break the complicated law down into what they call jargon. So, you know, a layman person can understand what's going on. So I went into law in the very perfect time for me because I didn't need to learn all the Latin and understand, you know, those, well, I understood the concepts, but I didn't need to re respout it because I couldn't spell it. No longer do they want it to be the language of the priests? No, no. Are you using your law degree today to practice? I'm st doing College of Law at nights, so I'm still studying at night. So once you have your law degree, then you've got to do College of Law, which is the Law Society have said, you've got a degree, but we now want to train you in what we want you to understand. And then you're able to go out into the workforce and get a job as a lawyer. Is that your goal? Eventually, yes. I'm. I, it's my backup point. I've got two or oh, three children, a newborn and a seven-year-old and a four-year-old, and farming is a young man's game. I've broken too many bones and I've got to start looking at a plan B, and that's as long as I'm not kicked in the head, I can generate an income. If I'm kicked in the head, the insurance money will pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you've got a plan C as well. Well, there's, there's always a plan C, yes, because being a rancher, everything wants to kill you. So tell me about your ranch. So I've got a, 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 I've got um, a couple of properties in Sydney. So I run beef cattle, and I've been doing that all my life, and I love it, love it. Um, but like all things, you want to improve and and better yourself. So to back up a little bit, when you were going through school, were you ostracized by your fellow students, or did you realize something was different? Ostracized the right word because you become, you, you, you pull into yourself because you're ostracized by your classmates, but also by the teachers as well, because they don't know how to handle you or how to educate you or, you know, understand you. And then also your fellow class people, everybody's struggling. So you become an anomaly. Um, and so you get, I don't want to say bully, but you, you become different. And that gap grows more and more as the years go by because you're not keeping up with the pack and you're falling backwards. Did that affect your behavior? I, th I think you start misbehaving, you start losing attention, you don't focus on what is actually happening in class, you daydream, um, and that also then goes back to then your problem student. And rather than trying to understand the problem student, you just tagged and you become the problem student and you muck up more and it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy. But what also was affected is your self-esteem. I was very lucky because I, I was from a family that said sort of pull up your bootstraps, you know, believe in yourself, you know, you've got an opportunity, get out and make the most of it. So every day you sort of get yourself up and you keep going and you don't sort of really listen. But a lot of families don't have that ability or, or don't have that understanding and belief um, in yourselves because it doesn't matter who you are or where you are you can you've got to reach the full potential of who you are and that was at whatever level that is as long as you're reaching your full potential you can't ask for much more than that um, God has given you life your I guess service is to make the most of it Tell me about your children. You've overcome these reading challenges, and I know you have a seven-year-old daughter that's struggling as well. I have a, I have a seven-year-old, um, Lara, daughter. She has um, displayed the same traits as what I had. Did that trigger something in you? That did. Watching her trying to read, 
trying to keep up the reports from the school. She was struggling. She was disconnected. It was starting to affect her confidence. She was um, not wanting to learn. You know, when you would sit down with a book, she would try other things. And I started seeing a pattern. And I went, I, I see that pattern in myself. I'm fearful of reading pages because you, you know, you're scared of what's on the next page. And I started noticing that and her fear of learning, her fear of words. And that was something that I have had all my life, but I didn't want her to have it. And I guess being a dyslexic parent and seeing that manifest itself in your child is fearful because you know you can't help them because you don't have the tools to help them because you can't help yourself. And that's what gave me the tools and the tool set to be able to help myself, to then actually recognize what was happening with my daughter and saying, I need to get you into Linda Mood. I need to get you the skill sets to be able to overcome at seven and have a strong foundation to then move forward, not just for her learning her English and maths, but for her life. Because Linda Mood gives you the skills to have confidence, to be able to break down the problems, to problem solve. And that is life, just not in English, but in life in general, it is about problem solving. So if you have that ability now to look at a word, look at a sentence or a mass problem, you are confident in yourself and nothing scares you because you just take a step back and you let's just think this through. And it's about that that I want to encourage in my girls is the ability just to stop, go, okay, I might not understand this. Let's just logically think it through and then move forward. And that is something that will stay with them for the rest of their life. And the change that I've seen in my seven-year-old is from a child that was uncertain has blossomed into, you know, a beautiful confident young woman who sings and dances every time she comes in is not scared not intimidated but empowered to i guess take on the challenges that the class is about to give her and looks forward to it and i can't put a price on that has she been labeled as dyslexic yes yes do you think there's a value to being labeled dyslexic i think it's a negative unfortunately there still is um society hasn't moved forward they view it as a disability i don't i think it, it is an ability i say you're a superhero it allows your brain is different to everybody else and you can see things differently and you can do things and if you go through and you look at history a lot of the movers and shakers have been dyslexic or have had learning difficulties as children because they've been able to rework how their brains work and move forward if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And that's how I view it. I don't see dyslexia as a, a, any disability at all. I actually, I find it empowering. And that's how I've viewed it on myself and move forward. You know, it is what who we are. You just got to embrace it and, and get on with it. Well, you've got a pretty positive life philosophy, that's for sure. I've had a wonderful team. I've had a wonderful team and like any house, if it's built on solid ground with stone foundations, you can go as high as the sky. If it's on shaky ground, at some point it will tip and sway. And my philosophy is to surround my children with solid ground, stone to build a beautiful foundation because life will knock you down. And it's how you get up, brush yourself off and get on is really what a person, you know, that's, that's your character. And what has really encouraged myself with Linda Mood, or so I should say Linda Mood Bell, what has really encouraged me with Linda Mood Bell is the teachers and the course and the structure is about building a foundation. It's about building the little personalities and the confidence in the children when they work through the door in day one they're not treated as having an issue they're actually special and they're treated as normal and encouraged to blossom who they are in their skill sets 
and that's what I love. Every child here is unique, as every child out in the world. And the teachers here are trained and craft to make sure every child reaches their full potential. And it is wondrous just to watch that. Now, how long ago did you attend here, the Learning Centre? I, myself, I was here four and a half years ago. Maybe you remember some of the program steps of working with imagery. In retrospect, how do you think that solidified if it did that foundation that you're talking about? Uh, I, I thought it was critical, critical. The imagery processing, actually all the processings are critical because it builds your comprehension. If you can see it and you can write it in the air and you see it in your mind, you understand it and you comprehend it. A lot of people can just read words, but they don't actually comprehend what the words mean. So by writing in the air and spelling the words, you're actually seeing it and projecting it back in. I found it very strong and actually a very powerful tool. And to the point that I actually now look away when I spell things or read, you know, to, to picture it in my mind before I write it down. I found it an extremely powerful tool. So do you still consciously use imagery? Actually, I use what I learned four and a half years ago every day in my spelling, in my comprehension, or even just in problem solving. You can probably do some of the steps with your daughter around the house now. I, I don't want to say, look, she's... My wife and myself spell now, so she doesn't understand. She's that good. She actually picks it up, and it's terrible. You know, you sort of, you know, you spell out a word, and, and then she goes, "Well, why are you talking about this or what about that?" And, and you go, "Oh no!" But look, isn't it a wonderful thing? You're going to have to pick up Latin after all. <laughs> yes, yes. So your daughter's in year two. How's she doing? She's doing very well. She has just jumped three levels in English which the school sort of sent us a report on, so which is just unheard of. Um, she is gaining confidence and just going leaps and bounds. So just not one level, she jumped three levels. Um, and that's what she's been doing, just going up levels, level, level. And she is at now what is deemed age appropriate. We now have my, f so I don't know, what, four-year-old. And she's doing the school readiness program. And so she is learning three syllable words. And she comes on like we say, well, what does m o p spell? She'll go m o p mop. And so she's picking up, she's understanding phonetics, she's understanding the ability words, she's reading stop signs at four. She's and this is I couldn't even do it at 18. She's a much better position. I don't know if she's dyslexic. Well, I'm giving her the same skills and the same benefit that we're giving our older daughter who is dyslexic, irrespective, because if she's not dyslexic, Linda Mood will give her a stronger foundation, will give her a larger stone to then move through her schooling and better be prepared for her education that's coming along either if you have a, a, a learning disability or not a disability, it should be taught in all the schools because everybody needs to have a foundation in English and maths. Irrespective of your ability, the stronger your foundation, the better you're going to be through your education. And that's all we can give as a parent is an education. I've had so many parents and teachers say that exact same thing that it really should be in every single school. Before, it's, look, as a parent, we want to have our children better us. Well, I do, so I, 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 I want my children to be better than me. I will give all my resources to give the opportunity for my children to be better than me. And I have no time in things that don't work. And when I went through, my youngest was three and the, my middle child was only two months old. Actually, she was just, actually, she had just been born. I just, sorry, love. Uh, and I sat down and, and did this course. So I had a three-year-old, a two-month-old. And after doing the course, I went, when my children are old enough, they will be doing it because the understanding of the English language was broken down into easy bite-sized pieces that I could understand and flow through. The teachers were so encouraging, so 
enthusiastic, but more importantly, they had a skill set themselves that helped you take your area of weakness and build it to a strength. And that doesn't happen often. And in a lot of courses and a lot of things I've done over the years, it's more hit and miss rather than a fine-tuned, precision, um, surgical strike. The original testing on day one allowed you to see where your strengths were, allowed you to see where the weaknesses, and just built it up to be level playing field. And nothing was deemed a weakness. It was just an area that needed attention. And I thought that was fantastic because it is encouraging. Had you tried other remediation services? I've tried a, a few things in the past, but nothing really gelled. It was more sort of hit and miss. Did you do the standard you know, four hours a day, five days a week uh, intensive instruction? I, I was doing 8.30 through to 5.30 for two months straight. All day, every day? All day, every day. And that was at um, the double bay because I just I had two months to get ready for law school. I couldn't really read before starting. And so I had I just immersed myself right into the course. Were you close to being a, a non-reader before you started this? I found reading fearful. Yeah. I found you know, opening a book you know, quite daunting. So you didn't do it? So I didn't do it. I don't, look, I, I had a university degree and, and that sort of stuff, but, and I got through that, but I... You did better if somebody read something to you. And I, I work better interacting in class, listening to lectures, asking questions, writing my own notes, rather than reading the textbook. I never read the textbooks. I just interacted with the lecturer and thought it through and read my own notes and then would have coaching. <laughs> That's amazing. But you can achieve anything. You've got to give yourself the skill sets to achieve. And life is about moving forward, building on those weaknesses and making them a strength. Now, they might not be as strong as, you know, Dean, but as, but, you know, as long as you're meeting your full potential and working on where the weaknesses are, you're, you're succeeding. You're succeeding. Your uh, plan D might be to be a motivational speaker. It, well, well, that'd be hard work. Everything's hard work. I'm trying to look for the easy dollar. I've tried to, I haven't figured it out yet. Look, life's about hard work. Life is about putting your mind to an effort. And I look at these children, I look at my children, and I thought, oh my God, I would not want to be at school. I would not want to have to go through schooling again because it was brutal for me. And I would not wish that on anyone. What I see in my seven-year-old is she has not once said, I don't want to go to school. She loves school. And that is because of Linda mood. Linda's given her that joy of school where before understanding and someone explaining and saying, look, little one, this isn't a weakness. This is an area we just need to focus on. Look at all your strengths. And that's what's good. They build them up. Every day there's points, there's prizes. There's, they encourage, encourage, encourage to the point that we're now having to encourage at home. It's all about reward. And it's all about you put in the effort, you get the reward. And you see the reward. And they're always going back and encouraging the students. On, an, on a, I would say, a class, if not day basis, every student walks out that door feeling positive, feeling encouraged and feeling supported. And God, I wish that would happen in adult life. How did you first hear about Linda Mood Bell? My sister. My sisters, my nieces were at Linda Mood. Um, so this is a, a, a family thing. Um, we are always being dyslexic and being found out. But my twin brother's dyslexic. He's finished a vet degree. He's working overseas at the moment. He's done Linda Mood Bell in Denver. Denver. I think he went back a couple of years ago and did Linda Mood Bell in, in Denver because I raved about it. And so he went and sat and did, did the course in Denver and, you know, just loved it. But he's got a vet degree and he's a, a veterinarian. Um, so May... I'll just pause for a second and regroup my thoughts. People say you can't do things. And with learning disabilities, people say you've got a learning disability, and that's a disability. It isn't a disability. It is an ability. 
I have done a law degree with dyslexia. My brother has done a veterinary degree out of Sydney University, which is the best veterinary school in New South Wales with dyslexia. You've just got to build the bridges and get the tools around you to be able to get over the little hump and move forward. Nobody can stop you. It's about taking what you've got, bringing in all the help you can bring around you and getting an understanding of where you can proceed and move forward and then moving forward. And that is what my girls are getting, that strong sense that they can conquer the world. Boy, girl, in, you know, learning disability, not everybody has the potential to be anything. It's true. Our schooling in Australia is a very state-based, you have to be a square peg in a square hole. They don't have the ability to really deal with things or children who aren't square. And being square, I think, is boring. I think the triangles, the circles, the, you know, is what makes life interesting. It's all right being a triangle. It's all right being a circle in the square world because you are special. And if there weren't triangles and there weren't circles, there wouldn't be geometry. Everything would just be square. And that's the beautiful thing about this course. It's giving self-belief to these children. And that's why I have my children here. And I recommend to anybody that has a child that is a triangle or a circle, please come and look at Linda Mood because that will help them move forward and reach their full potential. I'd like to thank Ray for coming in and taking the time to talk to me. You can view video profiles of other Australian parents and teachers on the Linda Mood Bell YouTube page. I'd also like to thank my colleagues in Double Bay and Chatswood. And I'd like to thank you for listening to Linda Mood Bell Radio. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We are Linda Mood Bell.